The history of the parks is very sketchy. <laughs> hey, everyone. We're having a little chat here. Welcome to Trail Talk. I am so glad you could join us today. We're live at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center in Duncan, Oklahoma. And I'm Edie, and this is my very special guest, Lois Dawn Jones. And you guys might recognize her because she was our guest. How long ago was that? A few months back. I've slept since then. Right, I don't know. Same, <laughs> I don't know the to that. same here. Same here. I've seen her other places since then, so I don't know. But she, she, uh, you came on and uh, talked about Duncan's Lakes. Correct. And mm -hmm. gave us just a great history and, you know, just you had those cool pictures mm -hmm. because, I mean, the, the lakes were all part of the, like the reservoir building system and everything that was happening around the state and, and just, you know, all of that. And so it was, it was a super important part of Duncan's history. Absolutely. Really. And so anyway, if you missed that episode, you should go back and watch it because it has a lot of really good information and plus all the great things that they're doing out there now. But this time Lois Dawn is here to talk about our parks. And if you have missed out on some of the new things at our parks, yes. it's just because you haven't been looking because I think the new signage, yes, that right there, Thank you. Yeah. Tina's hand is going to appear. Oh, she didn't get close there. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing me a little thing I wanted to show her. Anyway, um, our parks, of course, the signage is the big thing that mm -hmm. catches a person's eye as we drive around um, and look. But um, let's just, let's um, start up. How many parks do we have here in Duncan? I Seems like we have 10, lot. which is an unusual yeah. amount of parks for a community our size. Like a, a, a large, a, a larger large amount. Number. Yeah, really. Most communities our size do not have the amount of parks that Duncan has. Mm -hmm. We are very fortunate that um, those people in positions of development or in positions of leadership throughout the history of the city recognize the importance of green space long before mm -hmm green space became right. a buzzword right. and so we are very fortunate that all of the areas of our city have uh, green space available for the citizens to enjoy right and the the um i mean there's there's something there's some a, a feature of some sort in all of the parks too that's correct a, some a, a playing feature or a sitting feature or there's something a walking Trail. Trail. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all sorts of things like that in all of the parks. And I I think that that, um, that shows to me um, a continued uh, importance placed on the parks for the city, you know, that, mm -hmm. that they don't just make it a little grassy area, but there's, there's something there for people as well. So um, the, have the parks all been here for a long time? I mean, I guess the one over here by the Simmons Center, is that, would that be the newest park? The, uh, is that a city park? It is not. Oh, okay. It is not. Okay. So, so we even have more parks we do. that are not even city parks. We do. Wow. Yes. yes. Oh, that, okay. That's cool. So um, then kind of, kind of tell me what you do know. She was kind of mentioning, I guess there's not a lot of historical information available about the development of the parks. That's correct. Okay. Um, when I, I, when you invited me to come today and I said, sure, I'd love to talk about the parks. I said, what do you want me to talk about? You said a little bit about the history and how they came to be named, what they were named and when they were developed. And I thought, no problem. We'll have all that information. Right, right. No. The city doesn't have the information, um, or if we do, it's somewhere that I have not been able to access it yet. Shouldn't and so then I went to my next go-to, mm -hmm. which of course is the Stevens County Historical Museum. Right. Coba Williams and her staff of volunteers are so knowledgeable and so kind about doing research. Mm -hmm. And so uh, their executive director, Coba Williams, was able, able to provide me with some tidbits, but she as well said that um, it brought her to realize that they don't really have a lot about the parks either that are all in one central location where you can just pull it and, and take the information that you're looking for. Yeah. And so it's now become a pet project for her and I that we're going to work on together. Yay. And uh, between what I can gather at the city level and she has at the Historical Museum, we're going to put together a much more comprehensive, detailed history 
of Duncan Works. Well, how awesome. And That's it's all great. your fault. Oh, all my fault. <laughs> my curious brain wanting to know details about things. That's and, right. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. So the, kind of tell us some of the information that you were able to Fine. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I'll dive into a couple of the parks that I did find information in history mm -hmm. on. Of course, probably our most frequented park um, by the general public when it's not involving any sort of an organized sport activity is Fuquay Park. Right. And Fuquay Park at one point in time was one park. It was not divided by Highway 81. Really? It was one complete park before <laughs> Highway 81 was built by the Oklahoma Department of Transportation. Now, the park was named for uh, one of Duncan's first mayors, mm -hmm. Frank Fuquay, and it had a zoo at one time. Hi, you're, okay, this was the thing that I was very interested in, where yes. like my dad grew up around here mm -hmm. and talked about going to the zoo. And I was, it, kind of, it very much piqued my interest. So, Well, if you go I'm, over to Fuquay Park, um, west now, uh -huh. which is where the pool is. Okay. If you go behind the pool and if you look really carefully, you will see the foundation of what was the monkey cage. Uh -huh. It is still there. Uh -huh. uh, it was built, of course, during the WPA or CCC uh, projects. Mm -hmm. um, just a little bit of history there. The WPA projects were for married men to do, and the CCC projects were for the single men to do. I never knew that. I knew that they were going on at the same time, but I did not know that that was the that distinguishing. Was the mm -hmm. Wow, that's mm -hmm. interesting. And that was that was um, like depression era, yes. mm -hmm. uh, the government providing jobs, a way for people Correct. to earn money. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and we have quite a number of WPA projects in Duncan itself. That might be a cool trail talk in the future. That, that is true. Because there's some really neat uh, features that Duncan has that were a result of the WPA era. Mm, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. I like that. Tina, Next trail talk. You might have to make a note on that for me <laughs> because I might forget it between now and the time we sign off. Okay, that is, yeah, that's that's great. So, okay, they built um, the, the uh, zoo part. They did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so the zoo itself, it had Obviously, the monkeys, uh, right? Because we still have the remnants of the monkey cage. Sure. But did you know that it also had wolves? No. And alligators? Really? What? And probably the most impressive was Leo the lion. Wow. That is, that is so cool. It is very, very cool. So this was all in the 1940s okay. and 50s. Okay. And when the zoo closed, I cannot tell you that, um, but it's one of those tidbits of information for the future that mm -hmm. we're gonna do some research on. Mm -hmm. um, Cova Williams actually had a fabulous story that she shared with me just before I got here um, about the monkey cage. She remembers as a small child because she has lived here her, her whole life, which is why she is such a wealth of knowledge when it comes to <laughs> Stevens County yes. and to Duncan. Yes. But uh, Coba has lived here her whole life, and she says she remembers when she was either five or six, her father had brought her to the zoo. And for whatever reason, she had climbed up the chain link pole of the monkey cage. Mm -hmm. And she suspects it was probably to get a better look at the monkeys. Well, one of the monkeys grabbed her pigtail and wouldn't let go. And so her father, who was six foot, 200 plus pounds, he had to shimmy himself up the chain link pole and forcibly remove the monkey's little hands from his daughter's pigtail. <laughs> pigtail. I thought that was kind of, kind of, that, kind of a fun story. That, that is a fun story. Yeah. yeah. So um, these little monkeys, I guess you could get too close. You could indeed get too close yes. as yeah. opposed to today's <laughs> environment where um, our zoos are set up uh, quite a bit differently. They're, you know, trying to make sure that the animals stay in their natural habitat and right. have uh, less in, 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 in inference from, um, yeah, from people who were coming people. to see them. But yeah, just a kind of a, a neat story that uh, she uh, was know, held hostage temporarily. I hope, I hope you guys are able to find some photographs Mm -hmm. and things like that too. I think that would be amazing to mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. pictures of all yes. of that. There has to be someone, there has to be someone out there. If you're watching it, you have <laughs> pictures, 
get them to Lois Dawn or Copa and help them build this uh, this history of the parks. Yes, we would definitely like that uh -huh. very much. That would be so amazing. I can't tell you when the zoo um, era ended, mm -hmm. um, you know, unfortunately, but um, the other uh, uh, park that we did find some information about, two others actually, okay. um, Olin Sledge Memorial Park, uh -huh. was named after a very well-liked and well-respected local businessman, okay. Olin Sledge, uh -huh. and um, coincidentally, I believe it's his granddaughter uh, owns a fabulous store on Main Street called Eclectic Echo, Miss Debbie Sledge. Okay. Yes. So, okay. Uh, lots of there wonderful family history mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, she obviously takes off after the family line of running a very successful business because, um, but that was named after her great grandfather, I believe. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and then we have Play Day Park. And Play Day Park was actually a CCC camp at one point oh. in time. And they came up with the name Play Day Park because they ran a contest in 1949 for all the local students in the schools to name the park. And a young lady by the name of Lawanda Moyer mm -hmm. won the $10 prize by coming up with the name Play Day Park. And I would think in 1949, $10 was a pretty nice chunk of change. Right? right? Yeah. 1949. That, that was well worth the effort mm -hmm. on that. Wow. That's pretty, yeah, that's a pretty nice prize. So um, where is Play Day Park? I don't know. If I know for sure. Play Day Park is. and the Jack Weiniger Dog Park are both okay. on the south side of Duncan. Okay. On the, uh, I'm so directionally challenged at times, the east, east side, side of Highway 81. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Right over there, not too far from Herb, the old, where the Irving School correct. was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, correct. Okay, okay, yeah. I've been, I have been to that park. Yeah, and but it's a fabulous. There's a fabulous dog park there mm -hmm. now. Um, that was a recent addition, just in the last couple of years. And if you have not taken your pet there yet, they have a play area for large dogs and a play area for small dogs. Mm -hmm. And there's some nice benches, and, mm -hmm. and it's just a really great place to. Seems like there's even like a little watering space. place. There is a little thing mm -hmm. you can turn on water and give your dog some fresh water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, did you find some pictures? Oh, nice. Okay. okay there we go. Uh -huh. I'll have to. Next, yeah. the next trail. Next talk. trail talk. Yeah, yeah. The next one. We'll have the history of these parks. So, um, and then the Sledge Owen Sledge mm -hmm. Park mm -hmm. is, um, where is that one? That is also um, east of Highway 81, and it is not far from. Um, oh my gosh, um, I'm. Ridgecrest Drive and right, that right. area there. Uh -huh. So it's it's even east of in Fifth uh, Street. Yes, right. It's mm -hmm. east of Fifth Street. No, it would be and west of Fifth Street. What is it? I think so. I'm not a very good person okay. directionally. I'm, I think that's why you... I have a cell phone. <laughs> It gets me everywhere I need to go with like, maps. Uh, Olin Sledge Park <laughs> is kind of over there by the tree streets uh, near the Alphabet Streets. Mm -hmm. So it's a, I think mm -hmm. it's a little further east than fit a fifth, like near Mulberry or one of those little tree streets over there. Um, but yeah, Ridgecrest kind of at the yes, end of it that. Does. So yep. um, but it's a, I always thought it was a very um, pretty park. I kind of set in a a neighborhood of you know just a lot of small houses that are very close to each other and everything yes. and then there's this big open space it really feels like a great space yeah. and it has, has a lovely uh, walking trail mm -hmm. they added uh, the city added new playground equipment to that just a couple of years ago oh. um, which gets a lot of traffic which is uh, the major purpose for um, your parks to be there is so that your families can go out and enjoy and have picnics and mm -hmm. an area for children to burn off some energy as well as to host different events right so i thought that you know since i couldn't provide as much of the history of the parks as i wanted to mm -hmm. i wanted to kind of talk a little bit about what we currently have as amenities at all the different parks. Yes, yes. I would and love then that. maybe even also let you know what's projected to come in 2022 um, with budget and <laughs> availability of the supplies. Uh, the supply chain. Yeah, uh, being thing, possible. Yes. Uh, you know, we ordered um, playground equipment for Timbergate Park. Mm -hmm. And that 
playground equipment is now installed just barely not very long ago less right. than a month ago and that was ordered such a long time ago but because of supply chain issues and issues at the various ports mm -hmm. um the shipping just continually got delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed but it's finally here and it's a fantastic addition to timbergate park it's getting so much use i want to give a special shout out of appreciation to the mccaslin foundation because they made the toddler area um possible uh -huh. um as an addition to what the city of duncan had budgeted to purchase the playground equipment oh very nice it's a very we, nice addition we are very fortunate here in duncan the mccaslin foundation really um helps meet the needs of a lot of absolutely organizations or places or what locate things like that in our community yes absolutely yeah. They are a wonderful um, community minded mm -hmm. foundation that uh, they, you know, are so quietly supportive most of the time. Yes. Um, so many different items. And so hopefully I'm not going to get into trouble for giving you a shout out, but I did. So <laughs> there shout out to the McCaslin. There you go. There you go. So let's maybe start kind of at A and work our way through. Okay. Sort of, kind of. That it's sounds not good. Totally in order. But we have obviously the Abe Raisin. Um, oh. Jess Jess Welch Sports Complex. Say that fast five times. Right. <laughs> so we have a lot of baseball, soccer um, that's going on there. Mm -hmm. We have associations that run different leagues and camps there throughout the summer. And uh, there's also a playground and a picnic area. Brand new for 2022. There are going to be new bathrooms installed oh. and potentially playground equipment. <laughs> <laughs> if we can get it here yeah fingers crossed supply chain um as well as some shade areas uh, so oh. they are going to be um, like those shade sails mm -hmm. with the concrete mm -hmm. posts in the ground oh very nice because um there's a lot of wide open space out shade there. is um would be a, a very prime yes uh yeah. thing to have out there that's yeah there's there is not a lot much. yeah a lot Shade. so hopefully those will be some nice additions uh -huh. and then i wanted to visit a little bit about um the arboretum and heritage park oh yes and this is something i didn't know about as i was going down the walking path and admiring all the flowers that are blooming right now mm -hmm. there are 20 different species of trees in that park yes and each of the trees has an identifier uh sign mm -hmm. that tells you what kind of tree it is so if you think you know your trees <laughs> I challenge you to go to Heritage Park right. and don't look at the sign, uh -huh. but look at the tree and then have see. somebody there to keep you accountable uh -huh. to see if you actually are right. That's the right kind of tree. Right. So the way I became privy to uh, knowing those things about that, um, when, um, well, at least one of my children was in the sixth grade seemed well i guess we did this with a couple of them anyway the first one in sixth grade had a science teacher who required a leaf collection oh. <laughs> and so uh there was a bug collection and a leaf collection and we had us moms we had like black market bug trading yes. and leaf trading going on yes but some a mom was like, okay, you know, if you go to the Arboretum, that has all the information that you need to go with the leaves because they they had to do a report with the leaves too. Mm -hmm. And so great resource if you have an assignment from a teacher <laughs> to go to that Arboretum. But that that is also the park where uh, the veterans parade that the fifth grade students mm -hmm. do, um, where they march from basically from Irving, what was Irving School, yeah. down to Bodark and then across to the Arboretum. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's always kind of been a neat, it, I always associate it with, it with veterans because of that event mm -hmm. um, that they do here with the schools. But that it is, it's a, it's a really pretty little place, the way it they really have is. it, yes. uh, the, the round, um, the, the little wall the everything yes. circular yeah. deal it's it's again it's another unique. wpa project nice yeah very so. nice and i'll say so um that park is at bodark and highway 81 correct on the southwest mm -hmm. corner and, and then a brazen jess welch is on n street yes east yes um go east like between chestnut and i don't know whatever 
But if you if you took Chestnut East to N Street and then went uh, north, then you'll you'll see the park. You will there. indeed, yeah, yep. over there on the east side of the road. And it's very big, and it's a wonderful complex. It's been there a, a very long time. Yes, I, I don't know how many hours of my life. I gave to a brazen just well, well and you know it's, but it was what's exciting about a brazen um at the sport complex is that um, the city has a lot of really wonderful plans in the future for it mm. um but of course you don't build rome in a day and so it's going right. to take us a little bit of time right. but probably the uh the most exciting thing for people who spend a, their lifetime out there mm -hmm. is the fact that there are new restrooms being installed yes. So that's here, um, here, cheer, cheer. Yeah, here, here, cheer, <laughs> cheer. That's for sure. That's for sure. So then moving on, we okay. have Douglas Park oh, as well. Yes. Now, Douglas Park has a splash pad, uh -huh. uh, ample area for picnics, uh, basketball courts. There is a huge pavilion for shade. Yes. Um, and then they've got a playground as well. And that is also home of the Douglas Community Center, right? which is a privately owned. Um, it is not a city building, okay. Just to be clear, uh, mm -hmm. but it is there, and they do some wonderful programming. Mm -hmm. um, and that there, there was a pool there, right? There had been, there had been a pool, mm -hmm. but I, I would, I can see where the splash pad um, is just a lot more family friendly. I mean, you can take littles out there, you know, and just I don't know. I I love the splash pads. Uh, fortunately, the other splash pad was installed when my kids were still young enough to right. enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And um, splash pads are just awesome. But they really are. Yeah. They really became sort of a buzz in the community development uh, for communities in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that we did have Hillcrest um, splash right. pad was great, but the city you know, recognize the need to have an additional splash pad. And truly, we probably, you know, would like to at one point have one more installed mm -hmm. um, somewhere in the community. Uh, there's been discussion about that as well um, within the different um, commissions and authorities that help to make decisions for the city to, you know, kind of provide some advice and guidance mm -hmm. as to how they'd like to see different projects and where they'd like to see them occur within the community. Right. So right. Um, it's a it's a wonderful uh, and huge, like the, basket, I, and the yeah. basketball courts get used so much. Yeah, at I was about to say that park it's covers really a lot of land. Yeah, yeah it, it really is, does. It is really big, but it's, it's, it's really nice too. Mm -hmm. um, I was, we went out there, there was a community event that was held out there a couple of years ago. I can't remember what it was, but like a, 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 there was a barbecue out there and all sorts of things. And it was just nice to have a place where a large group of people that could be served mm -hmm. food under the pavilion and there were places to sit to eat and then, you know, places for kids to run around. I, it's just, it's a really nice part. I know a lot of people have birthday parties out there yes. at that park. Yeah. Right? driven it's, by or mm -hmm. it's seen very us. very popular mm -hmm. and then of course another park that's really popular for having events and celebrations is of course is Fuquay Park both uh, east yeah. and west right um and on the uh, east or sorry the west side we always have the pool mm -hmm. swings picnic tables um and then on the opposite side we have the playground the historical museum kitty land the gazebo the circle of love um, right. And I almost forgot Perkle Pavilion, which is on the opposite side oh, yeah. of the highway. Oh yeah, Perkle Pavilion is on the west side over there. Mm -hmm. And there the Perkle Pavilion is going to be getting a new restroom in 2022. Oh, that's nice. Yes. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. Now there was, is there still that skate park by Perkle Pavilion or not? Not really. Not there really. are tennis okay. courts there. Um, okay. It, it was a tennis court, but mm -hmm. it doesn't get used very much. And there's been some discussion um, at the city level as to how that can be repurposed into a space that is utilized by more people. Right. So right. Um, I'm sure there'll be more to come from the parks department. Yeah. I mean, how fun and exciting that not only have these parks been in our city serving the community for years, but uh, we're upgrading and meeting yes. the new needs mm -hmm. that people have, mm -hmm. um, you know, interests and ideas and things change. And it's That's great right. that our parks stay up to date like that. 
Yes. Well, you okay. know, it's interesting because, uh, you know, in the 60s and 70s, the buzzword was drivability. Right. You wanted to right. be able to drive everywhere. Yeah. Most homes had one car. Sometimes they had two, mm -hmm. but everything was drive culture. Mm -hmm. And then in the mid 1990s, we moved back to wanting walkability within our communities. Mm -hmm. And so walkability means walking trails um, and sidewalks. And we have lots of, um, you know, we have walking trails. Now, we, Duncan does not have as many sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about that, and I've been doing some research, is that sidewalks are typically installed by your developers when they come and develop communities. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so if there are no ordinances requiring sidewalk installation, then developers typically to save money will not mm -hmm. install sidewalks. Mm -hmm. That is very and interesting. so in I've the 60s and 70s, that was. that was truly, drivability was key. Mm -hmm. And so sidewalks were not really deemed that high on the priority list. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, we've moved and shifted where mm -hmm. people would like to have more sidewalks. Mm -hmm. um, but what's interesting about that is that um, typically cities do not install sidewalks. Mm -hmm. It is your developers, whether it's residential or commercial development. Hmm. That I mean, that would be such a major undertaking. I can't even imagine to install sidewalks all uh, almost completely in a town the size of Duncan because of the number of sidewalks we have is so small. Correct. I mean, it would just be, and I've often thought about that because of the the yard space. Correct. People would have to give up um, because a lot of the places where it, it's a small yard to begin with, mm -hmm. and then you'd have to have your little easement on either side of the sidewalk, and you know, it it, it take up a lot of space. Too. Well, and I think and, too that um, most citizens don't realize that a sidewalk on your property is actually your responsibility to maintain mm -hmm. and if you have snow or ice to keep clear um, so that someone doesn't fall or, or have an, an accident because that type. that is still your property all the way to the curb correct interesting so it adds all sorts of so different much. layers right yeah, but yeah. we're very fortunate that we do have you know um several wonderful walking trails now within the community and there are plans of course to continue to develop the heritage trails mm -hmm. um, they're finishing phase one up here shortly which is uh five kilometers or 3.2 miles but the plan for the heritage trails actually is slightly over 17 miles and those 17 miles would connect every green space in the community all the way out to the basin someday in the future yes. if i live long enough to see right it, right because right. it. It, it takes time it does and money it, yeah that's that is time for sure. and money, right? but i mean we've kicked it off with a really good start we have we we see the benefits of the walking trail here mm -hmm. there are literally people all day every day walking i mean uh, we have a large parking lot mm -hmm. bigger than what we and so a lot of people park here mm -hmm. and we just see them people with dogs people with strollers um people walking fast people jogging i mean it's just people just taking their time admiring the trees mm -hmm. and the beauty of it and it's it is really such a nice addition yes i, I really i really we love to use it. We don't live too far away, but I just like being here and seeing how many people use it every day. Again, walkability being, mm -hmm. you know, a really important thing for people for quality of life um, in 2022. Right, right. right. So, um, so moving on, um, talk a little bit about Hillcrest. Um, it was actually named Hillcrest by the developer and the park was established in 1951. So we did find out some information there. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1952, that's when they installed the original playground and the fence. But of course, now it has a splash pad, mm -hmm. uh, upgraded playground, tennis court. You can play baseball there. Uh, and they just did a new parking lot last year. Oh. So there's more parking besides just the side street parking. There's actually some parking spaces, including handicapped parking that's available at Hillcrest. Now. Very nice. And that park, is that the park that's um, near the fire station? Yes. Mm -hmm. On, um, I just went blank on that street. Um, it's the one I said you'd take. 
east to go to a brazen anyway chestnut. Dry, chestnut yeah you'd, then you'd go uh you don't go as far as woodrow wilson elementary school it's it's between fifth street and woodrow wilson but um well i i well i was over there yesterday and really paying attention to the big beautiful colorful playground equipment mm -hmm. that had to have been pretty recently yes. installed there yes um just I mean, eye catching, and there are so many kids who live in that neighborhood. I can imagine how much fun they are having on that playground equipment. Absolutely, it's a wonderful place for people to take their take their kids and mm -hmm. burn off some of that energy. Yes. Um, if you're looking for something a little a little different um, with, the, with our parks, Ron Burton Rotary Park. Not only is there a playground there, but they have musical instruments. I don't know this park. This, this is one I am not familiar with. This is very uh, close to the Duncan J.C. hut, um, next to the railway oh, tracks. Okay. And okay. Um, they have musical instruments. And so they're all metal, and they have different tines on them that are um, emit different sounds. Yeah. And you use the little metal handles to hit them, and they make sound. and. And so that's a bit of a fun park, especially if you have littles that right. um, are, you know, so eager to learn and explore and mm -hmm. it's a fun park to take them to. Very not. I did not realize that, that those things were there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew that that, now that you say which, where it is, of course, I've been by that park, but I, um, I did not realize they had fun things like that there. Yeah. They do. Huh. So it's a kind of a, a neat thing you want to check out. Right. Uh, Memorial Park, another great walking path. And of course, our war memorials are there. Right. And in 2022, um, the city invested in purchasing new gabion baskets. And gabion baskets are these huge, they almost look like chicken wire, but they put huge stones into them and they help prevent continued erosion of creek or river. Um, okay. okay. Embankments. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so um, those were installed and they look fabulous. I was just by there the other day to see um, the third basket getting finished up. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing the difference that they will make when it comes to uh, making sure that when we have those flash floods and the watershed down Clarity Creek, mm -hmm. that the embankment doesn't go with it. Yes. Which is, uh, had been a bit of a problem in right. certain areas. Right. Yes. And that park. I mean, you talk about uh, really changing. Absolutely. Uh, that the walking trail that was added, and then the different groups who put the benches. That in. is all leadership. Duncan graduates uh, was uh, one of the class projects uh, was to install those benches all mm -hmm. over the Memorial Park area, and it's a very nice addition. It is mm -hmm. so nice, and they are. I mean. They're they're put they're in places where you can have some shade, and there's a grassy area where little kids could play. But it's also very nice the memorials that, that are there. Mm -hmm. Earl P. Halliburton is there too. He is indeed. <laughs> mm -hmm. He is yeah. indeed. Yeah. And the well the crepe myrtles and everything in that park are quite pretty. Yes. As well, yeah. very very beautiful. There's a really nice um, planting of those. In that park. Yes, the Duncan Enhancement Trust Authority, um, which is an authority of the city of Duncan, they focus their efforts on beautification projects. And so um, they've got a lot of different things that they have done. You mentioned the park signage. Mm -hmm. That was all completed by Duncan Enhancement Trust Authority. Ah, very nice. And that uh, Ms. Carolyn Rogers does a lot. She does. With she that. is the chairwoman of DITA currently and has certainly been a guiding hand through a lot of the different projects that they have currently accomplished. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of other great ideas on the horizon as well to help beautify the community. Um, you know, and their funding source is separate from the cities. And so uh, there are certain projects that, that they do that, um, that they benefit all the citizens of the community. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. it is the signage is, is just really eye catching. It is. And it's very nice because um, like your name, you're listing off or telling us the names mm -hmm. of the parks. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't always know the name of the park unless there is 
and and some of the signs were dark or hard to see or they didn't know, have signage, or they didn't have mm -hmm. signage mm -hmm. at all and so these are the letters are big they're very easy to see and mm -hmm. it just um I don't know it kind of I feel like it kind of um ties you ties you to the community because you know the name and location of a specific place yes you know and it just and and I don't know I just feel like those landmark kind of things are important help to help people it creates a sense of place making yes yes Absolutely. And it, it's mm -hmm. it's really nice I'm, I'm I'm pretty excited about those signs I like them a lot Yes. Well, and of course, if you've noticed uh, at some of our main thorough streets that run east west, they actually have new signage as well, and it has a crepe myrtle on it with the name of the street. The intent mm -hmm. is eventually um, Duncan Enhancement Trust Authority will have all of those major thorough cross streets with Highway 81. Um, they'll have new signage uh, and it all kind of ties together, um, which is Very nice. a really nice addition right. as well. So we'd already kind of talked about Olin Sledge Memorial Park, mm -hmm. and we talked about Playdate Park. Now, Timbergate Park, it was put in by the developer, and oh. it was named Timbergate Park because, lo and behold, the addition is called Timbergate. There you go. Um, but it had new playground equipment, obviously, installed this mm -hmm. year. We waited a very long time for it, but it finally came, and it's getting very well used every time I go by there. There's kids playing. And then we have uh, Wizenant Park, which is also very well used. It has a walking path. It is connected to the Heritage Trails. Mm -hmm. um, and there is uh, there are plans for new playground equipment there as well. Budget and availability of supplies. Right. You know, it depends upon mm -hmm. that, obviously. Yeah, that the playground equipment equipment there um, has been there for a very long time that is the park it's just behind where we live and our kids we grew up you know they grew up us going to the park and right. playing and um i mean there have been groups who have come through and painted and tried to update you right. know and different things like that uh but um that would be very exciting i can only imagine yes. how awesome that that park will be whenever they get uh, a chance to put some new they have uh they have the great the nice bridge you know and that walking trail really is it's fantastic people use that yeah that one all, the, all time. the time yeah all the time and of course you know if you <clears throat> are interested in helping get the trails finished more quickly there's an opportunity to donate to the simmons center foundation um uh, to help make that possible mm -hmm. because it it takes money right right so is the playground happen. equipment at that park part of the trails or is that is that the city are which separate are you the, the or? Or? because it's part of the trail with the equipment there it will be city it will oh, yes, city. city okay, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. now if you go to the simmons center you know the heritage trails the simmons center is uh responsible for the maintenance mm -hmm. of the trails uh of that trail and they have that fabulous playground there just to the north of the Simmons Center itself mm -hmm. and that is um, the Simmons Center's uh, equipment and they do a wonderful job of keeping it uh, looking great and ready sure. for uh, kids to play and, and yeah. everything else like that yeah so we're really fortunate that we have all of you know we these really different parks are. and spaces I wanted to kind of just bring to everybody's attention that we have put out a new lakes and yes. parks brochure yes and Edie has it for you right here and instead of having to second guess yourself and your directions the uh yes. parks are there listed as well as the um, addresses or whether the, sh the street crossings rather mm -hmm. for each of them and lets you know what all of the different amenities are and you can find that brochure at city hall at the simmons center here at the chisholm trail heritage center um, and so if you have visitors coming into town, uh, that's a great resource mm -hmm. to be able to share with them. So that this they can optimize our green spaces. This is fantastic, Lowestone. This is, I mean, each lake mm -hmm. and the amenities mm -hmm. at the lake, the mm -hmm. size of the lake, all the things we talked about on Trail Talk. Yes. Um, and there's a map and rules of conduct, all of those things. But the parks page every park is listed like you just said the the address and then there are a, a place to make reservations and the pavilions that are at those parks there's information about the pool yes at Pukwe park little pictures of them this is this is so nice 
It turned out really well. Yes. Very pleased with that project. Um, reservations, I'm glad you brought those up because uh -huh. I think people need to be aware that um, people do make reservations in all of our parks, whether it is the gazebo, the pavilions. Um, and when they make that reservation, the entire park space is theirs to use for however long they have the reservation made for. Mm -hmm. And so if you have, you know, if you thought that you were going to have a birthday party at the gazebo and you show up and somebody's already there because of their reservation, uh, that reservation, of course, has to be what is honored. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important that you check with the city if you're planning to have any kind of a gathering at one of the parks uh, to be certain that you can reserve the park. Um, and then uh, if you have an annual event, mm -hmm. um, booking your next event, it is on a first come first serve basis. So you just have to be aware of that right. if it's a, an event that you want to have annually. That's very good information. That's a good thing for people. To and Kitty Land is in Fuquay Park, which is a city park, mm -hmm. but Kitty Land is owned and run by the Kumlins and has been for a number of years. And so any reservations for Kitty Land, please mm -hmm. contact the Kiwanis directly because the city does not make those reservations. Right, two weeks from today, we'll have some representatives from the Kiwanis Good. Club here to talk about Kitty Land. And um, of course, other things their organization does, but I, it, right now is the time to find out about Kitty Land and how things yes. are gonna kick off for the summer and everything. So, but, um, you know, I mean, you can you can potentially have Kitty Land mm -hmm. and the park organizations yes. will reserve the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so yeah, just be sure you know who to contact and and how to do all that. That's correct. And you know, if you take a look inside the brochure, it does tell you that to make any of the park reservations, and this also stands for anything that's at the lakes as well, you simply call 251-7734, and they will be happy to assist you with all of those uh, reservations. Now, Fuquay Pool um, has contracted to the Simmons Center for them to run it and mm -hmm. operate it. It just makes sense because they already have their indoor pool at the Simmons Center itself, right. and so uh, during the uh, summer months this year, the pool is scheduled to open on May the 28th, which is the Saturday of Memorial Day weekend, mm -hmm. weather permitting. We have to always put that caveat in there, but <laughs> right. it's always weather permitting. But um, the Simmons Center, if you're interested in reserving the pool for any type of a party, you'll want to contact the Simmons Center directly for those reservations as well. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was a, this, You maybe you got this in the mail. Maybe this was in your mailbox. It was in one, there was one in my mailbox. Mm -hmm. And I was very excited to open this thing up and see what this is a newsletter from the city of Duncan. It's it, our inaugural newsletter. Inaugural mm -hmm. newsletter. It mm -hmm. is so great. It's colorful. The print is big. It's easy to read. I mean, this is very well done. I was Thank so you. excited about it. And um, I'm glad that you, you brought some because I really wanted people to, if you have this at your house, open it and read it if you haven't. Yes, there's a, uh, right, <laughs> yeah, make it yes, worth please. her effort to put yes, it please. together. There's a letter from the mayor, a letter from our city manager. Um, there's information on our city council, mm -hmm. um, the police department, the fire department, the power, uh, Duncan Power, um, emergency management has a little thing in here, updates for uh, the spillway and boat ramp at Clear Creek, mm -hmm. and then the community development. There's a great story, uh, I believe it was in here, of no, yeah, about the parks. I think it was Timbergate Park, wasn't there a story? That was mentioned by our city manager. Mrs. Okay, that's Kimberly. where that's where it was. Okay, it was in her part yes. that um, someone uh, who lives or goes by that park mm -hmm. and she's talked about how she goes by daily and there are bikes parked and the park is full of kids playing and having having fun and that just had not been happening in a while but they replaced you the city replaced the equipment yes. and now it's full of kids and you can just imagine the laughter and the mm -hmm. fun and everything happening in that park and how the neighbors must love hearing all of that and just being able to experience those 
sounds and activities that weren't there for a long time and That's just right. you know how great it is thank you city of duncan for for doing that for enhancing the life of the the kiddos who live around that that park well it really is a focus of the current city manager mrs kimberly meek and uh, uh mayor robert armstrong and the council um, for quality of life and quality of life comes in all different um, definitions in a sense mm -hmm. as to what's important. Uh, and so a city budget is uh, created that has different line items and those different line items, depending on state statute and law, have to be spent certain ways. Earmarked, and so you have right? money that is earmarked for you know, your parks or you have money that is earmarked for your streets, which is always a hot topic. Um, the, you know, your streets, right? Um, please be aware that the city of Duncan is doing their best within the budget that, um, that they have for streets. And they have a lot of plans, which are mentioned in that newsletter, mm -hmm. as to what they plan to be um, streets they plan to be redoing in 2022. Mm -hmm. We did uh, 23 and a half blocks of new streets in 2021. Mm -hmm. And so again, your city manager, your mayor and your council are committed to making sure that um, if you have a whole pie and the sliver of pie that's designated towards your streets, mm -hmm. that that is being you know, spent the way it is intended to be spent. And they are you know, getting as many blocks as they can possibly get right. done done right. um you know with with that being said i think it's also important that citizens know that uh inflation hits everyone mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. supplies cost more um yeah and just all of that everything that it. happens to us personally happens on a business in a business it happens that's right. in a city that's right budget every everyone is affected by it that's right and so, um, you know, when you have a city budget, if you want to do more, obviously you need more money. And the best way for that to happen is through shopping local mm -hmm. because your sales tax directly assists the city of Duncan in all of these different areas that we have visited about today. Mm -hmm. And so the more local shopping you do, the healthier your community is, not only for your small business owners, but also for your city who depends upon sales tax revenue to make sure that we have playground equipment at our parks for our children, um, splash pads that operate every summer and a pool, city street repairs that can be done as the money and, and budget allows them to be done. Mm -hmm. All of that rolls together. And it's just really important that um, as community members, we support. Absolutely. And you know, you, were, you mentioned quality of life. Mm -hmm. You know, um, quality of life is something that employees and families look into before they move to a community right. uh, employees employers employers mm -hmm. um, and so to be able to have a um a better quality of life an improved quality of life mm -hmm. makes duncan a more desirable home for a company for families and that's how we grow yes and so it, it all goes hand in hand. It does. Mm -hmm. and, and so, I mean, it's all it's up to us, you know, as community members to pour back in. Yes. And and it just it goes around in a, just not in a really good way. It does. It, and mm -hmm. and we can all reap the benefits of it. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm I mean, I think it's I think it's great. I love what the parks are doing and how they're looking and. Um, you know, it's just it, this, this the time of year when mm -hmm. a school school's out and I don't remember how many days, like not very many days, probably like uh, 10 days or less than 10 yes. days. Well, probably 10 days. I bet it, I think it's about 10 days, 10 days of school are left. And, um, you know, kids are going to be home and they're going to be needing to go outside and for them <laughs> to get to go to a nearby a neighborhood park yes. mm -hmm. and uh, enjoy themselves is fantastic. I well, and you know, I just want to close Edie by saying uh, truly, you know, uh, since uh, city manager Kimberly Meek has come to the community, there have been a lot of strides and improvements made 
in various areas and just stay tuned ladies and gentlemen because there's more great things to come from the city of Duncan. yay i love it i i even love the new it's this is like a new logo it is mm -hmm. um but you can kind of see it better on this one yep, it this, is a new logo. this logo mm -hmm. this is bright and um mm -hmm. just kind of oh i don't know if you're gonna be able to see it oh. well mm -hmm. you know what look up city of duncan because right. it pops yeah. up whenever you look up the city of duncan and uh, in any way, it's it's just it's really great. Thank Is you. this what's going to be on the um, the the big signage in the median at uh, by Homeland? Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe? <laughs> this one, I mean, that that thing is big and it is blank. And um, this would this would look great there, you know. If it's not going to be there, it would look really good. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. So. There is more to come with the Homeland Project. Let me just say that, that there is more to come. Already, already, that is a very I'm stunning. Just the backdrop to me is stunning. I I really love the way that's looking. I I just I drive by there. Oh, what's good? What's, what's next? next? What's, what's next? next? I I, I, well, I have to say we've kind of been, um, you know, uh, putting teasers out there through social media about mm -hmm. that project because it is really going to be lovely when it's finished mm -hmm. and it's going to be a wonderful addition to the beautification of our community. Mm -hmm. And again, that is a Duncan Enhancement Trust Authority project uh -huh. that's being done in partnership with the city of Duncan. Oh, and perfect. so um, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be really good when I it's do. done. That's I can't awesome. wait till I, it's finished. Well, Lawson, thank you so much for coming back and sharing this information with us. I I think I'm, I hope everyone is very excited. I think things are just looking great toward the future. I mean, they're from if you look back just a little ways to where it is today, yes. it's better and it's just going to keep getting better and I think that that's amazing and awesome and I, I love it that our city um the the people who help run our city are thinking in those ways absolutely you know looking mm -hmm. forward looking to better the the community the quality of life and all of those things we talked about it's it's great yes. I can't wait to have you back on I know you're gonna we're gonna come up with something else for you to come back and share about our great city it's an mm -hmm. exciting time to live in Duncan and it's only going to get better awesome I love it so um also when you get mm -hmm. that history of the parks thing yes. we'll have her back for sure with that I mean that's going to be a, that's going to be great I love it you guys are going to be able to research that yes that'll be a fun little project so um you guys thanks for tuning in today and we will see you next week and not me you'll see her yeah well come say happy trails happy, happy trails, trails.